Hello and thank you for having me. I'm Mohamed Nogoyo, currently an affiliate researcher with the Institute of Development Studies. It's part of the Fast Stress project run by Professor Ian Skuns. I'm a Borana pastoralist from Northern Kenya, living in Isiolo County where I have been a research assistant with Dr. Kala Hanley for many years on studies related to environmental degradation, climate change, inter-community conflict, and studying the drivers of large-scale human cooperation. I'm now proposing to undertake my own graduate research on how we may best use technology in the form of blockchain to help strengthen pastoral claims to land ownership in locations that are currently undergoing large mega infrastructure development projects. So the issues that I'm going to be speaking about in this presentation are to form the basis of my proposed graduate research. So to give you some background on these issues, rangelands in Northern Kenya have historically been left out of large scale development initiatives relative to other regions in Kenya. However, recently global investment has shifted to the drylands of Africa that are mainly occupied by nomadic, semi-nomadic pastoralists. Recent examples of these projects include the Lake Tukana Wind Power Project, the Gilgil Gibe Dam Hydroelectric Power Project, that's happening in conjunction with the Ethiopian government, and the Lapsut Corridor Development Project, which is taking part in my home county of Isiola. Much of the development will directly affect pastoral access to community lands and utilization of resources. And there are questions as to whether pastoralists may be able to benefit from the development that has expropriated the land, or whether it will exacerbate social and economic inequalities. The answer to this question lies in whether development can adequately identify representative community members in order that they may be consulted during the development planning stages, provide their informed consent before implementing large-scale development projects, and compensated for their displacement or utilization of their land. This can be problematic when land is communally owned by populations that by nature are highly mobile and constituents can therefore be in influx. Currently, there is no a systematic formal process guaranteeing land rights within a community land system. Kenya's Community Land Act 2016 was the first step in legitimizing and protecting the land rights of pastoral communities. However, implementation has been slow and the legislation does not explicitly provide a practical plan for enacting and enforcing land rights within these communities. So the question is, what new implementations could be used to formalize and legitimize land rights claims for pastoralists so that a more systematic process for development can take place in Northern Kenya to identify affected individuals, require their consent, and compensate community members for access to their lands. Technology applications such as blockchain may provide a tool to aid in formally registering community lands for appropriate community members. Simply put, blockchain is an incorruptible digital ledger where data can be stored including land registries, bank accounts, cultural assets, voting histories, health information, etc., that are managed and moved around in a secure, private way because the data are maintained across several hundred or sometimes several thousand computers that are linked in a peer-to-peer -peer network. This type of registry therefore inhibits the data's subsequent modification. Blockchain is already being put to use worldwide by a number of international companies and development initiatives. For instance, GuardTime is a software security company that partners with governments to use blockchain to secure the national health records of more than 1 million Estonian citizens. And Barclays Bank has launched a number of blockchain initiatives to track financial transactions, ensure banking compliance, and ultimately to combat fraud in banking. Blockchain is also being rolled out across the humanitarian sector to track, distribute aid funding, or provide and manage IDs of people in refugee camps, or set up the ability to track cash transfers to individuals as relief distribution. The idea behind blockchain is that it ultimately promotes transparency and reduces fraud and corruption. 
blockchain is already being applied to Lantena and Property One claims in certain parts of the world. Ghana, Georgia, Honduras, and Sweden all currently have functioning blockchain technologies used in land registration. However, the present 90% of land in Africa remains unregistered. In the past two areas of Northern Kenya, blockchain could be used to help to disintermediate middlemen who have a history of tampering with land registries, where they infiltrate the government held registries by using officials to change records and their title deeds, which is an all too common occurrence. Simply, a decentralized ledger will make it impossible for such record tampering. So, what will blockchain implementation look like in Northern Kenya? Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta has already set up a national blockchain tax force charged with looking into ways Kenya can fully tap into the technology to improve service provision, address various challenges, and foster economic growth. So there is some president already there. For, in, for the pastoral communities, there must be a significant period of time and effort invested in first identifying which community members have rights to specific community land areas. Next, the type of data in the community land registry must be agreed upon with the community before they are recorded. Third, the names of all members of the community and other details, which may include identity card numbers, must be consented to by the community land committee that the information is correct and there has been no infiltration at this point before the data can be stored. In theory, there are many aspects that seem beneficial using blockchain for land registry in Northern Kenya. However, there are some significant obstacles and there are many critics of implementing this type of technology. First, there is so much hype around the use of blockchain that it's difficult to tell yet whether it's, it is justified. The Center for Global Development has said that there is potential risk for organizations investing in an inordinate amount of time, money, and effort, and getting to rely on this technology before they fully understand it. Blockchain is still a bit of a black box in terms of how it works. Also, blockchain is a high energy consumption technology, running many computers and servers in a distributed network. This may be problematic for communities in developing nations. Furthermore, a decentralized ledger can make things difficult for rights to privacy, data protection, and data ownership, especially if, this informa if the information is sensitive in nature. And finally, there is currently no legal framework that covers the use and management of blockchain technology, which may create additional vulnerabilities and the possibility for misuse. So the question remains whether the potential benefits to blockchain technology use for registering land in Northern Kenya outweigh the possible obstacles and current vulnerabilities present in this technology. So to answer this question, I'm proposing to undertake a research study to investigate the benefits and challenges that blockchain presents to pastoralists facing land use and management change, changes in Northern Kenya. I intend to conduct field work within the pastoral community areas of Isiolo County, which is home to more than 250,000 pastor, pastoralists as of the 2019 census, where the government has shifted to opening up the county to mega construction projects. And there's an urgent need to explore ways to manage pending land expropriation. And uniquely, I will not only look at the feasibility benefits and obstacles of implementing this technology in the pastoral areas, but I will also explore the notions of value that are socially constructed. Pastoralists already practice a type of customer blockchain, as it were in terms of personal ownership of livestock. This is an intricate system where Every pastoralist within a community seems to know who specific animals belong to, thus making it extremely difficult for anyone within the community to steal animals unnoticed. These alternative forms of blockchain are solely missing and unexplored in current blockchain research. Ultimately, I believe that by conducting a study on how novel technologies can affect pastoral livelihood, I will gain a more complete understanding of the complexity of these issues from multiple perspectives. 
that may lead to a more holistic approach in finding solutions or advising pastoralist communities to respond to the increasing hardships that we are facing. So thank you for, for your time. And I would like, I'll also like to thank Dr. Carla Hanley for helping me to formulate this research plan. Professor Ian Scones for meeting me as part of the Pastors Research Program. And Dr. Ibrahim Abduba, who is the ERPM Strategy and Business Development Leader for Oracle in Eastern West Africa, and who has agreed to help me with some of the technical questions dealing with the blockchain technology. I would now like to take your questions and receive your feedback on research I have proposed. Thank you.